What happens when an April Fool's joke turns into something epic? Well, in the case of Roger LZ, you get this. An awesome looking Delta printer that's not a Voron, hence its name, the Doron Velta. I first discovered this project through my buddy Austin from Hedgehog Makes, when he showed off the progress of his build. I've always been a sucker for Delta kinematics, and while they aren't as popular as they once were, there's something magical about watching them print. Late last year, Fisec reached out letting me know they were finalizing their Doron kit and asked if I was interested in building one. The last full Delta build I'd done was way back in 2017 when I built and modded a Cossel. So I jumped at the chance to assemble one of these kits. We streamed the entire build over on the Modbot Army channel and completed the main portion of the build a little over a month ago. I've had some requests to cover the projects we do on the streaming channel over here, so today that's exactly what we're going to do. In this video, we'll dive into Doron Velta. We'll cover more on the project, what the kit and assembly process was like, and I'll share my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's start off with a little background on Doron Velta. The oldest post I can find on the project is from June 2nd of 2024, when Roger shared the project repository in the Doomcube Discord. The creator, who's also the maintainer of Danger Clipper, now named Calico, shares on the project page that they've always been fascinated with Delta printers, and started out by disassembling an FL Sun Q5 that he'd been gifted. With the consensus that Voron wouldn't ever release an official Delta printer, Roger planned to modify the Q5 to look like a Voron, but instead built an original printer from the ground up only using the arms from the Q5. A buddy of mine and awesome community member Double T jumped in early on to build one of these and helped out with the parts in CAD. Roger states that they don't have extensive CAD or Delta knowledge, but I really think what they put together with Doron is very impressive and something really special. From my perspective, they absolutely deserve praise for taking a fun passion project this far. The project's open source and you have full access to the step files to customize your build to your heart's content. There's also a full bomb if you prefer to self-source and Fisec has a complete kit if you want to get everything at once. While the bed's print area is 200 millimeters in diameter and the height is around 160 millimeters, you'll only be able to reach the full bed if you opt to run without the panels. Hedgehog Make sent me a custom Orca Slicer bed and profile that shows the printable area of the build plate with panels, and because of this, I decided I'd keep them off. Based on looking at the two different CAD models, the Fisec kit of the printer is pretty close to the stock one, but you'll need to make sure you print out parts for the Fisec specific hardware that's available in a separate repository. Here you'll find an image to follow for wiring, as well as the complete packing list for the kit. For the extruder, they give you a Sherpa Mini CNC, a Sailfish hot end, which sort of looks like a Dragon heatsink with a Bamboo Lab heater block, and an R4 controller. The only thing you need to source on your own is a Raspberry Pi for running Clipper Host. The rest of the hardware is fairly standard, but I'll have a link in the description to the bomb for anyone wanting to take a deeper dive. Doron Velta has a lot of printed parts. From the skirts, to the joints, tool head, and extrusion covers, you want to make sure you have a printer that's capable of printing with ABS or ASA. It's approximately 1.5 kilograms for the primary color and 500 grams for the accent pieces. I stuck with the Voron part recommendations for the covers and the skirts, which is probably overkill, so I used a little bit more filament with my build. As for the assembly process, as mentioned, we built the entire printer on stream, and we ran to a handful of challenges along the way. There isn't a build manual for Doron, so it was primarily me referencing CAD and getting plenty of feedback from chat along the way. This is one area I feel like can really be improved upon for accessibility. Since the project was released for fun and never really had any plans of gaining a following and certainly not an official kit, providing the CAD is plenty as far as what anyone can expect from Roger. However, once Fisec decided to turn Doron into a kit, I strongly believe they should have been the ones to put together a build guide. I have no idea if that'll ever happen, so for anyone that does decide to pick up a kit, I have a few resources that I recommend. First is the video by Looplinks. This is a 41 minute video going through almost the entire build. 
It's largely sped up and cuts between sections, but I referenced it a few times and found that most of the question marks I had from the CAD, I was able to get answered by jumping around in their video. Second is the Cranefly GitHub. This was shared with me by my buddy Delmar during the stream and was a lifesaver. Cranefly is the official toolhead for Doron created by Chirpy, and there's lots of great information in there about how to get it assembled. Order of operation is really important for Cranefly, so you'll absolutely want to have this GitHub open and reference it when you get to assembling it. Lastly is the Doron Velta channel in the Doomcube Discord. Having not built a Delta in so long, and never having configured a Clifford Delta, the community members answered a ton of questions I had, and I want to take a moment to thank them all. There's lots of great information in there, and an awesome group of people if you get stuck. With those resources, I was able to get the mechanical part of the assembly done. For anyone that watched the stream, the biggest whoopsie I made was on the bed assembly. Doron uses a kinematic bed, and the bed is held in place using three springs. Going based on the CAD, the needed heat inserts to attach the springs to weren't present. So when I assembled the bed, I bolted the ball screws right up against it. When it came time for me to attach the springs, I realized that there was nowhere to hook them onto, and discovered I was supposed to use a longer screw with a heat insert as a standoff. If you follow Looplink's video, you'll see this and save yourself a bit of headache, but make sure to install those heat inserts before you attach the hard magnetic bed cover. Another thing I should have done was feed all of the wires from the tool head up through the acrylic panel before I mounted the controller and the large printed part on top of the printer. I was able to fish all the wires through, but it would have been much easier if I did that before. Once I finished the physical build, I moved on to flashing the controller and setting up the config. This is where the Fisite kit is really lacking the most. The first issue was getting the firmware flashed. The instructions tell you to power on the board, then connect it to your computer. Hold the boot cell button, tap the reset button, and then release the boot cell button. We tried this a handful of times on stream and the board never showed up on my computer. What we ended up discovering is that once the board's powered on, it will not reset. So the solution was hold the boot button down, then power on the controller with that button held down and tap the reset button before releasing the boot button. Once we did this, the board popped right up and we dragged the firmware file over to the controller to flash it. This small error in instructions turned a two minute job into 30 minutes of trying various things. The next and bigger issue I ran into is with the FISEC included config file. I don't know where they got it from, but there's no way it was used and tested with this hardware. I wish I kept track of all the different things I had to tweak, but it was a lot. We covered a few of them on stream, like the extruder section, but off stream, there were lots of other things that needed to be changed. There also wasn't any slicer profiles available, so I took an FL Sun profile and began hacking away at it. I'm happy to share my current config, which is far from perfect and has had a few hardware changes, but the Doron Velta Discord is another place where I ended up finding users that shared their configs and I believe I saw a profile as well. Moving forward, I went through the Delta calibration outlined in the Clipper documentation, which is relatively straightforward. However, when I completed it, I still had a few issues. The first was with my printer's first layer. In the Clipper documentation, it states that probes not mounted at the nozzle are rarely suitable for use on a delta because any minor effector tilt will result in probe location bias. After showing what I was dealing with in the Doron Discord, a few made the recommendation of ditching Clicky and doing the manual delta calibration with a piece of paper. Once I did this, I got way better first layers. And unless you modify the printer for a nozzle probe, it's my recommendation as well. After I resolved this, I moved on to the next thing, which was inconsistent extrusion after retractions, rounded corners even with pressure advance, and stringing. I spent a couple days poking at the printer, adjusting temps, retraction distances and speeds, PA values, accelerations, and a number of other things, but the improvements were minimal at best. Then I finally decided I was going to swap out some hardware. By default, the Doron uses a Bowden style extruder, and a pretty long one at that. While I like the CNC Sherpa Mini and have been running it on my V0, manually loading filament is painful even with no tension set on the filament. 
I started out with using a macro to load the filament, but shortly after decided to swap to an LGX light so I could easily switch off tension and manually load the filament. While this was really a convenience upgrade, it didn't solve the issues I was having with my prints. So I decided to make some other changes. I swapped out the included Bowden tubing for Capricorn and completely rebuilt the tool head using a high flow dragon hot end in place of the included one. The primary reason for this was so I could use standard nozzles and attach a nozzle probe in the future if I decide it's necessary. After this, I started my tests again, extremely hopeful that this would do the trick, but that hasn't been the case. The swap did resolve my issue of under extrusion after retracts, but my corners are still really round even after multiple PA tests and trying a range of values, I haven't been able to fully remove the stringing. At this point, I've learned a lot in the process, but I'm at a bit of a loss as to what's causing these issues. I have a hard time believing it's something mechanical with the build, which points to something between the filament being fed into the extruder and the filament coming out of the nozzle. With how much time I've spent on troubleshooting and tweaking things, I had to take a pause on this. But my next step is going to be to flip the extruder and run the Bowden tube through the side. Since I'm not running panels, this will allow me to shave off maybe 200 to 300 millimeters in length from the Bowden tube. If that still doesn't resolve it, my next step is likely going to be to convert the printer to being a direct drive. I've seen at least one other person running the Doron as a direct drive, and while this does mean added weight, I would happily drive the printer a bit slower in trade for cleaner prints. As you can see, it's been quite the journey with this little printer, and I feel like I am really close to getting things dialed in, but it hasn't been without lots of different tweaks. I'll have my config file uploaded to my GitHub for anyone to take a closer look to see if there's anything that stands out. But after so many changes, I'm really leaning towards it being more than just firmware or slicer related. Even after all this, I still really like this printer. From its creation as more of a meme to its finished look, it's just a really cool project. As of making this video, there's currently 27 serials from completed builds, and I wouldn't doubt there's a handful more that never requested a serial or are currently being built. Many of these printers are running without the issues I've been experiencing, so I have no doubt once I get this resolved, it will be a capable little machine. If you're looking for inspiration, there's a lot of really cool mods that have been done on these builds that I highly recommend checking out. My goal with this is not to deter you from building one of these printers, but to hopefully set realistic expectations that it's going to be a bit of an adventure. Rogers laid down the groundwork for Doron, and using the resources mentioned earlier, building one of these is completely achievable. The biggest wish I have is for Fisac to create a build guide to make this project more accessible, along with a config file that you can at least use as a baseline without having to tweak things before starting even your first print. This will not be the last time we see Doron in a video, and I'm looking forward to getting these last issues resolved so I can see what this printer's actually capable of. And that's been Doron Velta. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the questions of what Doron is, where it came from, and what my ride has been like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. And once again, everything, all the resources and stuff I mentioned will be available in the description for anyone wanting to take a deeper dive. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.